Welcome back to Everyday Health Hacker. This week, we're going to be talking about biphosphonates and the dangers of keeping your smile. And when I say that, is that a lot of dentists, you know, when you, we always share with people that if you're going to be started on a biphosphonate, go talk to your dentist first. Because so many, and what we do here is restoring people's smiles. And what happens when they start on the biphosphonates is that their teeth actually crumble and they they just lose their teeth. It's called indentialism. So let's talk about the dangers of biphosphonates and osteoporosis. Stay tuned. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Everyday Health Hacker. I'm Mike Kersey, along with the awesome Dr. Lisa Liao. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm awesome. I tell you Yay. what, this is interesting. This is uh -huh. something we're going to talk about, and I like it. Dr. Liao is Chief Medical Officer right here at Meridian Health Institute in Sugarland, Texas, where everybody wants to be, although it's a little rainy this last couple of weeks. Yes, it has been, but we need the rain. All right, folks, our goal is to provide you with the information that you need to make the correct health decisions. Yes, and we've got a big one this yes, this week. Big one. We're talking about biphosphonates and osteoporosis. You That's know, great. I, I'm so happy that I got that and didn't screw it up. Yes, you did a great <laughs> job. So osteoporosis, what is that? You know, a lot of people will say, you know, my DEXA scan. And I'm like, okay, well, what did you understand about your DEXA scan? And a DEXA scan is not just something for women to do. It's also something for men. You should do it every one to two years. And that's just checking to see how, what your strength is and your calcium scores are for your bone density. And when we start to lose bone density, we can have fractures or we can actually, um, cause a fracture, you can you can just stand up and all of a sudden you fall because your bone just fell away. So we call that osteoporosis, which is the thinning of the bone. And interesting enough is that Big Pharma came out with biphosphonates, and this can be a tablet, it can be an infusion or an injection that you receive. And I'm going to share today the reasons why I don't recommend those. And again, I'm going to repeat that. I do not recommend biphosphonates. You know, I've got a good friend, lives up in Fredericksburg, and he was about f five, six years un younger than I am mm -hmm. and worked with me for mm -hmm. years, and he has osteoporosis, mm -hmm. and he's had it for years, and poor John, I mean, he's a big guy, he's lost tons of weight, mm -hmm. he looks like a skeleton, and he's been that way for a lot of years, mm -hmm. he's still around, um, he's probably in 65 or so now, mm -hmm. and I mean, I feel so sorry for him, it's really changed his life. Absolutely. So osteoporosis is something that we can do and we can prevent. And how we prevent that is by doing weight bearing exercises. So a lot of, a lot of my patients will say, well, doc, I, you know, I exercise, I go for a walk every day. Well, go and get a, a weight vest or maybe put a backpack on and add 10 pounds, you know, start with maybe five, 10, move up to 20. And that's going to be a weight bearing exercise because weight bearing actually causes your bones to strengthen and we want to strengthen our bones. The interesting thing about biphosphonates is that what it does on a DEXA scan is that it looks like that you have more bone because it's keeping your old bone around. But guess what? Your old bone is not strong bone. Oh. So then it can, you can also, you know, have a problem, have a fracture. And one of the things a lot of doctors don't tell you, you know, I think every doctor that's prescribing a biphosphonate, that they need to make sure that every patient has seen a dentist and get a dentist point of view. Because a dentist is going to find, what they're going to share with you is that it causes indentialism. Now, indentialism is a big word, so let me repeat what like that is. Like biphosphonate isn't? What that is. And that basically, indentialism is that you're losing your teeth. Because what happens with biphosphonates is that it breaks down the maxilla and the mandible, and you get jaw necrosis. In other words, your jaw bone starts to necrose, which basically means that it's dying. So it loosens the teeth, and now you have no teeth. You can't do an implant because you don't have strong enough right. bone to do jaw that. Bone. So then you're going to end up with a denture. That's if you're lucky and you can carry it and, and maintain it because, you know, a lot of people's dentures will slip out. That's why we do implants. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is see your dentist for wellness checks. You know, it's more than six, every six months. Uh, dentists are about wellness. Your primary care physicians are also about wellness. They should be asking and finding mm -hmm. out when's the last time you had a hygiene appointment, when's the last time you saw a dentist, in addition to when did you have a colonoscopy, all those simple things that are very important. And if you are suffering from osteopenia or osteoporosis, 
there are other options. And one of the things that we do here is that we do natural hormone replacement. We put you on an exercise program. And then we may also place you on a nasal spray that's called myocalcin. And myocalcin works with your parathyroid. We all have one. We've heard of thyroid. Parathyroid mm -hmm. is right there close to it. And it helps to maintain and build bone. Taking vitamin D also helps to build bone. And one of the reasons why we give testosterone to women is that it also helps to increase your bone mass. And those are all very important to have strong bones as we start this aging process, which I like to call wisdom process, because not every aging body is actually aging. It depends on what your diet and your exercise regimen is. And you know, and I'm here to fight it. I'm having another birthday next week and we celebrate all month. And what we do is that we get into a new nutritional plan. We do new exercise programs so that we can not only encourage our patients about what we're doing in our mid fifties and seventies here at, at our office, is to help us feel better and be strengthened so that when we reach our 70, 80s, we're not dependent on a walker or something to help us to aid in mobility. We want to be out there doing the things that we love with our grandchildren. Okay, now, let's say we're just normal people and we're in our 60s, mm -hmm. uh, which would have been nice. Mm -hmm. But how do we know that, how do we say, well, okay, I should check and see if I have osteoporosis. Absolutely. Or, or do I, do I, is there a symptom? Is it my bone hurts? So your bones what, may what be achy. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, well, that's just arthritis. I'm achy or I'm just aging because I'm achy. Well, I want you to change the mindset, which we're going to be talking about would in, you, in would another podcast. Would your bones hurt or your joints hurt? Your bones and joints might hurt. However, they might not. So that's the reason Good. why during your physical exams, they should be ordering a DEXA scan so that we can see what your bone density actually is. Because there's a score to it, a score that goes to it, and we call it a T-score. And we want a good T-score. Do, do insurance companies usually pay for this? Scan? Actually, that is something that insurances usually pay for it. However, it's something that's very affordable. It usually runs less than 150 I see oh. it mainly at about $100 for the for the scan. Okay, now the, this medicine that they, they seem to give out that yes. help people with the hips and things and, like that, in case that, that has these horrible side effects. Side effects of now, losing your teeth and karma, losing your smile. You think they maybe think there's, in my opinion, uh -huh. there may have had put a lot of research into this and said, oh, it's got these really horrible side effects, but why don't we sell this anyway? I, you know, um, there are patients that have come in and as soon as I see one of those medications, I inform them, I educate them. And then, you know, even big pharma says you should only be on this for a short time. Mm -hmm. But we have seen patients that were on it for 10 years. And the reason being is because none of the doctors are communicating to each other. Right. I encourage to make sure that all your doctors have the information. And most, most hospitals and most doctors were able to do that through emails or, or through mm -hmm. a very secure yeah, system but... called MyChart or something like that so that everybody's talking to each other. But the key is, is that there are alternatives to help save your teeth and save your bones. Yeah, but to be honest with you, not everybody doctors are like you and like some of your friends that you would refer somebody to. They don't look at this stuff. They're just, they've got, I mean, bless their hearts, they've got so many patients and they've got so many things going on. And, They're trying to make a living. And that's why we do these podcasts is okay. to inform people that you have an option. I want you to also have the education right. so that you can ask your primary care physician. Because I do know primary care physicians that, you know, we all go out to lunch and they'll say, you know, I have a checklist. I ask these three questions and then I'm out the door. And I'm like... So that's, what, three minutes? I mean, yeah. we spend a lot more time with our patients so that we get to know you, your family, and what's going on in your lives because your health is important to us. And we want you to value. We only get one body, so we want to take the very best care of it. And this is just one of many things that we look at. Yeah, but you're not having to see 100 patients a day or something I choose like not that. to. Right. Well, I'm saying that, but a lot of them are, are kind of stuck. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I appreciate what they're, what they're trying to pay their bills mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but... It's up to the actual person, the patient. Yes, we have to be our own advocates. That's it. They have to. It's up to you. Look at some of the of the side effects of the stuff you're taking. Yes. And some of it is going to scare you. And okay? I always share with patients when I'm prescribing a new medication is that you can go on Google and you can look at all of the the side effects. However, you know you can also we're going to have a discussion and I'm going to give you the main side effects that are the most common. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are some things that you know that. Some of the side effects, you know, when you have surgery, you sign a consent form that uh, death is a possibility. Yeah. You know, those are side effects. They're not typical. 
However, there's something that should have a discussion because you need to make mm -hmm. the best decision for you, your right. health, and your family, and that's different for everyone. Right. But you can also go with your pharmacist. If you go to one pharmacy and get all you, your stuff You could. Done, Do you know yeah. how I feel about that? I know, but, but a lot of pharmacists are pretty sharp, and they'll go, by the way, you know, if you're, I see all your stuff that you're taking, yes. and this is going to interact with this. That your however, know that, you however know. every doctor does know that, and the reason being is yeah. that it's federal standard is that we send in e-scripts and it automatically cross-checks all of your medications. Really? It does. Every single one of them. And we sign off that we are aware and that we know that there is a possibility of a cross-reactivity. Now, granted, that may be 5%, 10%, but for the pharmacist that sends me and, and calls me three times to ask me the same question when I've already marked that off and that patient has been on that regimen for five years, you know, they need to have, they need to actually read what they send to us because they're not <laughs> bothering to check their inbox in eScripts. A little frustrated, maybe? A little frustration, <laughs> but that's okay. Just, you know, send me your name and your license number, and I'll be glad to have a discussion with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think I think I might have touched a little nerve there. <laughs> well, I just want rare, pharmacists to <laughs> communicate, not just with the patient and said that the doctor did something wrong, is that, you know, during a certain time in our nation three years ago, everybody knows what I'm talking about, there were pharmacists and individuals that were making physician decisions and practicing medicine, and I don't agree with that. No. You know, we all have our part. We all went to, had an, have an education that we're supposed to share our knowledge and work better together for our patient. And that's what my hope in doing these podcasts is to give information so that you can ask questions and get feedback that you need in order to make a better decision. Well, there you go. Or you can just call us or email us. Info at Everyday Not Health Not everybody's Hacker. here, and you wouldn't have that much room for that many well, people. Well, I mean, but. fortunately, we have a team at Meridian Healthcare, That's true. which is uh, awesome. Meridian Health Institute, Meridian Medical Dental Healthcare, and we're here to answer all of your medical and dental. We want to be a resource. That's part of our mission here at Meridian is that we want to be your resource. So we do. We have an international practice. We have people that come from all over the world, and we're here to share knowledge. And that's the beautiful part about having an international practice and reaching so far and wide is that we are getting information from all over the world, which helps us catch things a lot faster. And uh, that's by communicating, and that's communicating with those other physicians who are wonderful in utilizing the, our encrypted messaging progress you know, that between each other. That's actually very true because when I had all these side effects from the COVID boost, the first COVID booster. And you know how I feel about that. I know, but <laughs> nobody knew about it. And she went, oh, I know what that is. I've got friends that told me about that from yeah, other, you know, that's and, right. and Bolus now all of a sudden everybody knows, but you were the first one. Yes. And so there we go. Yes. You get, you and, get and now we're everything that we're hearing in studies, we already had predicted. That's right. Now, there so. you go. All right. Folks, if you have a topic you want us to tackle, info at everydayhealthhacker.com. That's and, the number to get. And if you have questions about osteoporosis or osteopenia, please drop a line on the comments below and one of us will reach out to you, whether through an instant message uh, through Instagram or Facebook in addition to our YouTube and podcast. Have a blessed day and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one.